Hmm, what's this question all about? A wave pattern produced? Well, that's the end of the question. A ripple tank is used to demonstrate interference between water waves. Describe the apparatus used to produce two sources of coherent waves that have circular wave fronts. Hmm. Hello, Dr. Schleif here. And today I thought I'd go ahead and create some circular wave fronts in, well, not a ripple tank, but the closest thing I've got to it. So I'm going to use these basketball here uh, as some ball type dippers to create some circular wave fronts. And one of the important things to keep in mind about interference is that we need a coherent source of waves, right? And that means I'm going to have to be sure to oscillate my arms at the same frequency so that the circular wave fronts that I create with the ball type dippers, these basketballs, uh, will be of the same frequency. The other thing that's important for interference is the waves have to meet, right? And so if one wave goes in one direction and the other wave goes the other direction and they never meet, well, they can't superpose and we can't apply the principle of superposition, which is really what's at the heart of wave interference. So let's go ahead and create those circular wave fronts, being sure to stay at the same consistent frequency. Take a look at the bottom of the pool. You might notice the circular wave fronts propagating and you're seeing a crest where you see the bright spots. Where the crest from each wave front meets the next one, you can see it's a little bit brighter. Now we do have the added complication of the fact that my pool isn't a perfect ripple tank. And so as the waves get to the boundaries, uh, the edges of the pool, they are being reflected. And so you see kind of a more interesting uh, pattern than just the interference pattern that we're used to. But indeed, if you look closely, we should be able to see that characteristic interference pattern. Interference occurs when two coherent waves meet, they overlap, and there's going to be points of reinforcement and points of cancellation. Those points of reinforcement result from applying the principle of superposition when the coherent waves meet. If crest meets crest, then we get a double crest. If trough meets trough, we get a double trough. Those are both examples of constructive interference, places in the pool where there'd be a lot of splashing. But if one of the waves travels half a wavelength longer than the other wave, well, then by the time the crest from one wave makes it to a point, it's going to be the trough meeting it from the next wave. And when crest adds up with trough, well, that adds up to zero. And so that's an example of destructive interference, places in the pool where there's not so much splashing. Well, that's enough physics for one day. Time to get my laps in. Dr. Schleif, signing off.